Well, hey there. Welcome to the Kim Constable podcast. Nobody cares. Work harder. Now, before we dive in to the content, I just want to remind you guys that Buns and Guns, the biggest contest we have ever run in the history of the Sculpted Vegan with a $20,000 first prize officially began this week. But if you are listening to this um, week beginning 24th of May, then it is not too late to still join the competition. You can still join the competition this week, even though you'll be a few days late in starting. It doesn't matter. You can still get incredible results. So if you want to join Buns and Guns, the biggest competition we have ever run, then simply go to thesculptedvegan.com. Um, you will see it on the homepage in the programs you too can join the competition and be able the chance of winning an enormous cash prize so i just wanted to let you know about that before we jump into the content so what are we going to be talking about today we are going to be talking about the dreaded cellulite now i know i've done a podcast on cellulite before so this is not going to be a repeat on cellulite or what it is or what it's not or all the rest of it this is going to talk a little bit more, um, I guess, about something that I was thinking about the other day whenever I was driving, which was about how getting rid of cellulite is kind of like making a million dollars. They are very, very much the same process. And I was just driving the other day and thinking about this, and I thought this would actually make a great podcast episode because it is something that I see a lot, which is women in the group complaining about cellulite or about loose skin or saggy skin and how they can't get rid of it. And I, you know, I'm always offering as much wisdom as I possibly can, but I thought this would definitely make a good episode. So we're going to dive into, you know, how you can get rid of cellulite, what it takes. And in the process, you might even be able to make a million dollars because the process process is exactly the same. So hopefully now that I have piqued your interest before we get into the content, just let me remind you again that we are nearly at the end of May 2021, which means that we are getting close to doing the podcast giveaway, which uh, to enter, all you have to do is leave a review of the podcast wherever you listen to it and send me a screenshot on Instagram and we will choose a winner from everyone who sends us a picture of their review and we will award somebody a Sculpted Vegan program at the start of June 2021. 2021 and you can choose any program at all including the brand new buns and guns or even the 18 month sculpt and shred any program at all is yours if you win the podcast review and like i said in the podcast last week we really don't have very many reviews sent in maybe one a day if even one a day so you are in with a really really great chance of winning if you do follow the process and send me that review so do it on instagram at the sculpted vegan and hopefully you will be in with a chance of winning one of our programs and we will announce that next month Okay, so let's dive into the content. Cellulite. Well, let me tell you how this came about. Like I said in the intro, I was driving the other day and I was thinking about a post that I saw in one of the groups um, about someone complaining about not being able to get rid of cellulite. Now, this person was, I would say, in her late 40s, early 50s. I think in her early 50s. She was probably 40, 35, maybe 35 to 40% body fat. So she had quite a lot of body fat and she really did have uh, quite a lot of cellulite. She had a lot of cellulites on the back, cellulite on the back of her thighs. It was very... Uh, the backs of her legs were very, very, very um, lumpy and, you know, wrinkly and cottage cheesy and everything that you would expect with cellulite. And the poor soul really was, um, I was going to say not blessed, the opposite of blessed, but she really was um, riddled with cellulite. And she was just saying about how upsetting it was for her and she really couldn't get rid of it. And she'd been trying everything. And could someone give her encouragement that the cellulite would eventually go? And I jumped on and said, yes, 100%, you know, it will go and this is what it'll take. And I went through, you know, different things. And she said, thank you. That makes me feel so much better. But whenever I was um, then driving the next day, I was thinking back to the post and it struck me how getting rid of cellulite or changing your body in that way really is the same process as making a million dollars. And I know because I've done both of them. So um, what do I mean by this? Well, let me tell you what happened to me a few years ago. I was about 30 
four whenever I decided that I was going to foray into the world of online marketing. I had been running a company from home. Um, It was a bricks and mortar company. It was a language company for children and it required an enormous amount of work and driving around and picking up, you know, language teachers and dropping them off. And, and I really wanted languages for my kids. And I just thought every other person would want these languages. And so I went hell for leather uh, trying to find customers for my business, which I did. It was like a basically like a babysitting service, but the people who were employed to look after the kids spoke different languages. And it, but it was really, really time consuming. And then whenever I found out I was pregnant with Jack and then afterwards he was born, I realized that I could not run this business anymore because with four children under the age of six, I just didn't have the time. So I started looking online for options. I actually thought I was going to write an ebook. Many of you will know this story because I've told it before, but I thought, you know, what can I do to earn money online that does not require my, you know, me trading my time for money, which is what I was really doing in the business that I was running. And so I started looking online thinking I would write an ebook. And as I began researching ebooks, I was naive enough to think that if I wrote an ebook, it would make me not even a million dollars, but it would make me quite a lot of money. And so I started researching into writing an ebook and that opened up a whole new world of internet marketing for me. I didn't even know what a blog was back in the day. So we're talking here about 2003. Let me think. It was about 2012, I think. Jack was born in 2011, late 2011. So this was about 2012. I started uh, looking into online marketing and I began buying books and I began, you know, reading blogs and reading websites and researching. And I really began to get excited by the prospect of online marketing and that I could make money online because it was relatively new in those days. And so there was... um, I remember like I I tried and failed and tried and failed. Like I was reading all these different books. I was getting really excited. I read this book, um, which was about female entrepreneurs making it online. And there was one particular woman featured in the book and she was called Cherie McConnell. So Cherie at the time owned a company called... um, Oh, I can't remember what it was called, but it was something about, you know, teaching women how to create networks online. And her whole business model was based on the premise of if you create a network, if you create um, uh, something which is a network, which seems professional, it gives your business a whole you know, a whole other level of credibility. So things like, you know, the uh, something association or, you know, the I ended up starting a company called the Work at Home Mums Network. So the network made it sound much more professional. Now we're talking here uh, 10 years ago, okay, nine years ago. So it was, you know, it wasn't... Um, Obviously, that today the the business model she was teaching may not stand online, but I was all excited about I was going to create a network or an association. And so I started, you know, looking at all her stuff online and she had lots of different products for sale, teaching you how to do this. And I remember going back and forth and back and forth and back and forth to her website because she had this uh, she had this program on her website called um, Create Your Network, and it was literally step by step how to create your uh, create and launch your online network, and it was six hundred dollars. Now I was a stay at home mum; I was not earning any income. My husband saw all the money that I spent. I did have like my own credit card that he couldn't see, which I sometimes ran up bills on and then cleared. But uh, I had, so I, d- I really was like, God, oh my God, if I spend six hundred dollars on this, Ryan is going to kill me. But then one night, I remember I must have had like a glass of wine or two, and I just decided to take the plunge, as you do after a couple of glasses of wine. And I purchased this program called Create Your Network by Sheree McConnell. And honestly. I thought that I was made. I honestly believed before I purchased this program that this program was my golden ticket to online success. I believe that if I could just, this is, you know, whenever you're looking at a program and you haven't bought it yet, a lot of people do this with the Sculpt and Shred. Now, our Sculpt and Shred is $1,500, but a lot of people look at it and they think, oh my God, if I could just afford to buy this program, my fortunes would change. I will look like Kim Constable. I will sculpt the body of my dreams because you can't see in inside the program, but you imagine that inside the program is some kind of holy grail, some kind of shining beacon, some golden cave that once the door opens, you will magically, as if by osmosis, 
just transform into this incredible physique athlete who's disciplined, who has motivation every day, who's a clean plant eater, you know, a, a goddess in the kitchen, you know, a, like looks like a, a, you know, something like Bo Derek out of the movie 10 coming out of the water in her bikini. You know, you just think that you're going to unlock the secrets to this incredible body. And I'm not saying that you don't with the Sculpt and Shred. It sounds like I'm trying to get you people to not purchase the program. That's not what it is. So let me just explain. Well, with Cherie McConnell's Create Your Network, I believe that if I just downloaded this program and followed it step by step, I would eventually become if not a millionaire, but at least start to make money online. And honestly, at that point, I think I would have been happy with five figures. I think I would have been happy with four figures, never mind six figures or seven figures. Seven figures just seemed like a pipe dream at the time. It just seemed so unattainable. And I had a friend at the time who was also trying to, you know, get into the online marketing world. And I remember with her, um, I think it was, I had been trying and failing and trying and failing for a couple of years, you know, to, you know, to create my network. And of course, things needed investment and they needed time and there was so much to learn. And and so what happened was once I opened uh, Cherie McConnell's Create Your Network and I started working through it, I realized a couple of things. First, I realized how little time I had. I had four children under the age of six. And so I knew that if I was to ever actually do anything with this program, I was going to have to commit time to it. So carving out time every day was immensely difficult and I really was quite inconsistent with it. I didn't realize that I had to set aside time every single day and commit to it. And then the other thing that I realized was as soon as I bought the program, there was more investment to be made. I was going to have to invest in a website, in a web developer. I was going to have to invest in um, getting graphics made. I was going to have to learn Pinterest, learn Facebook, learn, you know, all of these different things at the time and, you know, learn, well, Instagram didn't even exist then, but I realized once I bought the program, how much I didn't know and how much more there was to learn. And I remember, though, I was committed to the process and I remember shaking my friend's hand. It was my 34th birthday, I think. And I remember shaking her hand at the dinner table or not at the table. I had a few girls around for drinks. I remember shaking her hand and I remember saying to her, six figures. She said to me, no, it was my 35th birthday. She said six figures by 36. And I said, yes, six figures by 36. That is what I committed to. I'm going to make six figures by 36. And we shook on it and I looked her in the eye across the table and I thought, I am goddamn going to make six figures by 36. But I didn't. (laughs) I didn't even make six figures by 37. I didn't make six figures by 38. I think it took me to about 39 to make six figures. But I was committed when I was 35 that I was going to make six figures by 36. But it absolutely 100% did not happen. And it wasn't through lack of trying. So what was it because of? Well, I realized that the expensive program that I bought, the $600 program that I thought was the answer to all my prayers was actually, in fact, in fact, I didn't realize that until much later, but it was the first step on my path to success. It wasn't the be all and end all because like I said, it took me another four to five years to make a million dollars, another four to five years to make a million dollars. In fact, I didn't make a million dollars in my business until 2019. So between Uh, October 2018 and October 2019, I turned over a million dollars. Now we had a profit of around, I think, a quarter of a million. So it was a it was a great year financially. But I turned over a million dollars in the company um, between 2018 2019, and this was like 2013 when I had committed to six figures. So it did take me another four to five years, and in between that time that it took me to make, you know, to go to make a million dollars, which was even bigger, of course, than the 600, or sorry, than the six figures, I spent thousands and thousands of dollars and thousands and thousands of hours learning, working and applying knowledge. I spent every single available free moment that I had soaking up knowledge about the online marketing world. First of all, I mean, I wasn't even bodybuilding at the time. In fact, I wasn't even a yoga teacher. I was practicing yoga. But at the time, in the early days from 2013, I spent every single waking hour learning everything I could learn about online marketing. I I watched countless free webinars. Every single webinar that I could get my hands on, I watched. 
every, I used to watch them while I was ironing. I used to listen to audiobooks while I was hanging up laundry. I would have gotten up early at 5 a.m. and worked in the morning. I was absolutely determined to make it work. But it was really, really disheartening because let me tell you, nothing was fucking working. I was just losing money. I was hemorrhaging money. And I remember whenever I first launched my first company, which I thought was going to, you know, be really successful. It was the Work at Home Moms Network. And the day I launched it, I remember checking and I had, I made a sale and it was like two. $297 $297 for a, an annual membership, which I, I just thought was like so expensive at the time. And I remember checking it. I was like, oh my God, I made my first sale. And I remember checking it and it was my mum. <laughs> Bless her heart. It was my mum who made, my, who, who bought the first program, but I didn't even care because to me it was a sale. To me it was affirmation that someone wanted to purchase my program. And I don't even know when I made the next sale. I think it was like a week or two weeks later or something. It was like, it was horrendous. And I kept giving away free memberships to people because I wanted to start building up the group. And of course, at the time, you didn't even use Facebook groups at the time. Facebook was so new. Everything was done in a forum inside the Work at Home Moms Network. And so I would give away loads of free memberships and I would try and, you know, you know, help people and friends and people I met just to try and get the interaction and the engagement up. But I really was not making any money with that company. And the reason why I wasn't making any money with the company is simply because my heart wasn't in it. I was only doing it to make money. I, was, I wasn't I was passionate about teaching other mums how to make, you know, how to build successful businesses. But apart from anything, I hadn't built a really successful business, not like I have now. You know, I was able to launch a program last year called the Million Dollar Mentor, which was a six month mentoring group inside a private Facebook group. We, we delivered no content. The only content we delivered was me teaching live twice a week. I went live on a Monday, taught a masterclass, and on a Wednesday, I did a live Q&A. We had the information um, summarized and then posted in the Facebook group, and I launched that last year. Because of the the amount of credibility that I built up as a businesswoman online, we made half a million dollars in that launch. We, We opened the cart for two weeks, and we made half a million dollars. And so that just proves whenever you have, whenever you are what you teach, Teach, whenever you have the proven experience to be able to teach people, then you something will sell quite easily as long as you know how to sell it. But at the time with the Work at Home Moms Network, I hadn't really built a successful business online. And so everything I was doing was about looking to other people. I was looking at the Marie Forleos and Derek Halperns and James Wedmores and all of the internet entrepreneurs. I was looking to them for inspiration to my con- for my content because I didn't really know what the fuck I was doing. So I was kind of regurgitating or reworking a lot of content. I was learning online and putting it out there as my own. And if anyone is interested in seeing the Work at Home Mums Network videos, just go on to Google. I never took them down. Go on to um, YouTube and Google Kim Constable Work at Home Mums Network and see some of my really, really early videos, which are absolutely cringeworthy. But I love watching them now and they do make me cringe. And that was my first ever attempt online. Now, why am I telling you all this cringeworthy material about my very first attempts online? Well, because I was convinced that whenever I started online, that it was going to be easier than it was. I really was convinced that all I had to do was find the perfect formula, the perfect program, the perfect formula for me to plug into and I would be successful. But it literally took me another four years to be able to make $100,000 and another five years to make a million dollars. And honestly, in those five years, that's 365 days a year multiplied by five, it took me a shit load of effort to get there. And it, and I didn't even start making a million dollars. I didn't even start being successful until I became a bodybuilder, until I went into the world of veganism and bodybuilding, which wasn't even in my remit whenever I first started. I, I could, wouldn't, well, I was vegetarian, but I certainly wasn't vegan and I certainly wasn't a bodybuilder. So it took me to switch lanes completely even to make that million dollars. But the point I'm making is that I never, ever, ever gave up. I never, ever gave up. I was determined that one day I would get there. And even though some days I was crying, some days I wanted to give up. And in fact, you know what? That's not true. Okay, uh, let me tell you a story. Actually, I didn't even have this in my notes, but let me tell you about what happened in the middle of the story. So I tried and tried and tried to be successful online. I even built a mailing list of over 30,000 thousand people. I'm not even joking, but I still wasn't making fucking money. I mean, I was making a bit of money, but I wasn't making anything huge. 
And so I remember um, I decided that it was just too fucking hard. I was like, it's too hard. I can't be arsed anymore. I am, I'm just giving this up and I'm going to become a yoga teacher because I loved yoga and I was practicing yoga, you know, every single day. And so I gave it up and I, uh, I gave up. I closed down all my accounts. I closed down my email accounts. I closed down my website. I closed down everything. I exported my mailing list and I lost it. I lost my 30,000 person email list. I'm not even joking. And I became a yoga teacher. And I was like, life is so simple now that I'm a yoga teacher. I was teaching maybe 10 to 15 hours a week. I was earning four to 500 pounds a week in cash. You know, it was life was sweet. It was simple. I, I felt so much better. Now I wasn't, you know, constantly pushing and pushing online. And then slowly I began to get the bug again and I thought to myself, you know what, maybe, maybe all of those years of research and learning in the world of internet marketing might not go to waste. Maybe I can use everything I learned to build a yoga business. And so I did. I began to use that to build a yoga business called The Yoga Talks, which actually started to make money. And then from there, that's whenever I went into vegan bodybuilding. So I did give up in the middle of it. I did give up. I've always said I never, ever gave up, but actually I did give up. I closed everything and I gave up. But then whenever I saw an opportunity to use what I had learned in yoga, I took what I had learned and I and I started then to apply it to yoga and I started to actually see success because this is something that I was massively interested in. I was practicing every day. I loved posting videos on Facebook and eventually then on Instagram. So, and I, I just loved... Um, I loved what I was doing. It was very naturally a part of me, and that is really when the th- when everything started to flow. But this is not a this is not a, a podcast about me building a business. It's about cellulite. So let me bring it back to, you know, what this reminds me of. Well, whenever I was a yoga teacher before I became a vegan bodybuilder, I was skinny. Yes, I was definitely under eating, but I was strong. And I was strong, physically strong, because and mentally strong, actually, because yoga teaches you a lot of mental strength. So I was physically strong and I was mentally strong. And I had a huge foundation of knowledge built up over years and years of nutritional study and yoga study and study into the body. I certainly was not experienced as a bodybuilder, but I was experienced in the human body and how it works. So it, you know, it was the equivalent of whenever I started bodybuilding then I saw, you know, I I began to get success really quickly and I stood on stage only a year after I was, um, I I started training. And I, you know, in the beginning, I guess what I really didn't understand whenever I taught my first ever webinar, whenever I launched The Sculpted Vegan, what I really didn't understand was I didn't stand on stage a year after I started bodybuilding because I had something special or I worked really, really, really hard or I had something that other people didn't. I stood on stage after a year because I had a really good starting point. And so getting from beginner bodybuilder to standing on stage really wasn't that difficult. It was difficult and it was time consuming and it took a lot of work and dedication, but it really, really, really wasn't that hard. Now, why wasn't it that hard? Because I already had a good foundation, foundational knowledge of the human body. I was naturally good at lifting weights because I understood how to turn on the transverse abdominus. I understood form. I understood muscle engagement, all of those things from my years and years of training. So I didn't have to learn all that before I could push heavy and see results. Intrinsically, I I knew that because I brought it in from another discipline. So starting bodybuilding from being a very successful yoga teacher was kind of like starting a business with $50,000 in the bank. So I, you know, they always say if you have a million dollars, it's much, it's very, very easy to make a million dollars if you have a million dollars. Your, you know, your second million is very easy to make. My company turned over $5 million last year. It, yes, don't get me wrong, we worked our asses off, but it is so much easier to make more millions when you already have millions. Just like it's much easier to become a bodybuilder, to eliminate cellulite, to get rid of your mum tum, to reduce back fat, to transform your physique, all of those things, whenever you are already quite fit or slim or or muscular, or you have a good foundation in some other sporting discipline or in yoga or something, because you are starting from a better advantage point. It doesn't mean that it's impossible. It just means that your road to success is definitely going to be a little shorter. So what does this have to do with cellulite? 
bodybuilding, building businesses. They're all, you know, the reason why I use a lot of metaphors in this way or I draw a lot of parallels is because a lot of teachers focus very much on content rather than process. So what do I mean by this? Content is the how, the why, and the what of doing something. So content is, I don't focus on this on this podcast of going, here's how you get rid of cellulite. You drink three, lit- three liters of water a day. You um, go to the gym five days a week. You do 60 minutes of cardio a day. You eat 1600 calories a day. You, you know, go do fascia blasting or cryotherapy or whatever. I don't, that's all, that's content, okay? Everybody knows how to lose weight. You eat less and you exercise more right? Everybody knows how to, you know, how to, everybody knows the content of how to do something. Everybody knows the content of how to start a business. You have to, you know, figure out what kind of a loan you need to get or what you need to start. You need to buy a computer if it's an online company and to start a website. So everybody knows the content, but what many people don't know is the process. What do I mean by this? The process of something is the higher level view, which is above the content. So in this particular particular example, the process of building a business is exactly the same as the process of getting rid of cellulite. When you are getting rid of cellulite or when you're looking at your body and you're looking at this bo- this body part that you hate, let's just keep with cellulite as an example. You're looking at the cellulite and you're thinking, oh my God, I really, really, really want to change this. How do I do it? Well, the first thing you have to do is look at and you have to ask yourself, how bad is the cellulite, right? How bad is the cellulite? Is it on a scale of one to 10? Is it a 10? Like you cannot, you don't have one smooth area on your entire leg, apart from the top of a bump, which, you know, isn't really smooth. Then, um, you know, you, so you have to ask yourself, what what is your starting point? And, and then what do you need to do in order to change it? And really the, the process of changing cellulite is figuring out how much of a deficit you're in, where you need to get to, and how long you're going to have to work. That's the process because the process of doing anything is the same. Find a plan, work the plan, commit to the plan, commit to it over the long term, and eventually you will see results as long as you never give up. That is the process. Let me break this down a little bit more for you. So with cellulite, okay, it, it's if you have a lot of cellulite, and this is what I was thinking as I'm driving, it's kind of the same as starting a business, $50,000 in debt. Now, whenever I first started training, I had a little bit of cellulite, not a lot, just a little bit. So and not only that, my body was pretty strong and it was already quite lean. So I started my cellulite, in inverted commas, business with a $50,000 deposit in the body bank. And so with that $50,000, I was able to take that $50,000, which was basically knowledge and training and hard work that I'd built up over years and years and years. And I was able to turn that into a physique athlete's body in under 12 months, right? But you may not you may not be where I was. You may not have a $50,000 deposit. Now, you may be pretty lean, you're not overweight, you have some cellulite, you know, but not heaps and heaps of it, but yet you don't have a lot of training experience and you haven't really, you know, trained in any discipline, whether it be yoga or any other sports, and you certainly haven't been to the gym, but now you've decided you want to train as a physique athlete. Well, you may be starting from maybe a $10,000 deposit in the bank, or maybe you're starting from zero. You're not in debt, but you don't have anything in the bank either. So that is your starting point, right? Now you may, but then you may be in the other end of the, of the spectrum and you may have heaps of cellulite. You may be quite overweight, a little bit overweight or a lot of overweight, but you may have some training experience or you have been training in the gym or you've been training with a personal trainer or you've been doing a running club or you've been doing hit clubs or you used to play professional hockey when you were younger or or you used to train in the gym when you were younger, right? So maybe you're starting your journey with a $10,000 debt. So your debt is not huge. It's a $10,000 debt because once you start training, you're going to remember, oh yeah, this is how you do this. Oh yeah, you, you know, you have some nutritional experience or you have some experience in training in the gym or you have some body awareness. So you're starting with a $10,000 debt, right? Your journey is going to be longer than mine because I started with a $50,000 deposit. Doesn't mean that it's impossible. It just means that you're realistic about your starting point and it's going to take you longer. But then you may be like the woman in the group who inspired this podcast. You may be 
$100,000 in debt. You may have cellulite all over your body and be 40 to 50% body fat. And this is because you have abused your body for years. Just like someone who has spent years and years and years spending money on credit cards and overextending themselves financially in, you know, and they've built up a huge amount of debt. Maybe they've gone bankrupt a couple of times. You know, they're behind on the, the mortgage repayments on their house. They are um, leveraged to the hilt financially. Someone like that who wanted to start a business is start is going to have to clear all all that debt first before they start a business. You cannot start a business if you are already massively in debt. It's just not going to work. You're going to, because until you get rid of all those bad habits that got you into debt in the first place, you're never actually going to make any money. It's exactly the same as bodybuilding. Do you see where I'm going with this? If you have abused your body for years, you haven't trained, you haven't walked, you've been eating a, the biggest pile of shite, you have been, you know, like eating too much salt, drinking too much alcohol, you have had a very sedentary lifestyle, and now you've decided that you want to change your body, you are potentially starting your body change with a 10, 20, 50, 100,000, or $500,000 debt. And you have to clear your debt before you can get into profit. So what does this look like in terms of cellulite? Well, for you, just like whenever I bought my first program, which was, you know, the Create Your Network program, whenever I first bought that, I thought that buying this program was going to be the answer to all my prayers. But it really was not. It was the first step in a very long journey. It was the first step in learning new in, in learning new ways, in learning new habits, in learning, you know, everything to do with online, ever to do with business. It was the first step along the way. So if you are fifty thousand dollars in the cellulite, you know, bank debt in debt in the cellulite bank, you are first, before you even see success, you're gonna have to clear the fifty thousand dollar debt. You're gonna have to learn you're going to have to become like an information junkie. You're going to have to have to learn about the body, about nutrition, about carbs and proteins and fats and macros. You're going to have to go to the gym and learn all the machines. You're going to have to learn all the exercises. You're going to have to learn good form. You're going to have to, you know, there's going to be so much that you have to learn along the way before you even have a chance of getting into profit. And apart from anything else, you're going to have to lose all of the body fat that you've put on over the years through many, many, many bad habits, just like you would have to get rid of all the debt that you've accumulated over the years financially through many, many, many bad habits if you were starting a business, you're going to have to clear all that first before you even get into profit. So it's extremely unrealistic for people to come into one of my programs, such as say the eight week buns and guns program, which we have just launched, to come into that and think that after eight weeks, they are going to be transformed because it's just not true. Because everybody has a different starting point. Some people are $100,000 in debt. Some people are $50,000. Some people are $10,000. Some people are have no debt, but they also have no profit. But then some people have been training for a while or have had training experience or, you know, whatever, and they are starting in profit. Their journey is going to be quicker, faster, better. Maybe they're younger. They have a faster metabolism. You know, a 20-year-old is going to burn more fat than a 50-year-old. It's just the way the world works. But you have to be realistic about your starting point and not get upset whenever your expectation does not meet with reality. Because unless you are 100% clear about where you are now whenever you're beginning, you're never, ever, ever going to get where, where you want to be. And if you can change your body, you can make a million dollars. If there's anything that I can say to you in this episode of this podcast, it is that take, um, take heart, I guess, from the fact that if you can change your body, you can make a million dollars because the process is the same. You are responsible for changing your body or for changing your financial situation. Books, programs, podcasts, etc. They are all 
tools for learning. My eight-week buns and guns, my eight-week butt camp, the 18-month sculpt and shred, whatever. All of the programs that I've created over the years are not the be-all and end-all. They are a stepping stone in your journey. That's why I never discourage people from jumping from one program to the other. And I don't mean jumping from, you know, like in the middle of one over to another one, which which it totally is fine too. Like the coaches sometimes get upset and they're like, oh my God, I can't believe all these people in the 18 month are, you know, have decided to do buns and guns. And I'm like, guys, listen, the 18 month is not the be all and end all, right? If someone is in the middle of the 18 month program and they see the buns and guns is coming up and there's a, you know, a competition and that competition is going to keep them highly motivated for eight weeks, they are going to learn learn so much about themselves, their body, their levels of discipline and motivation of keeping going when times are tough. They're going to build so much self-esteem through following a program like that for eight weeks that it's it's a fantastic idea if they jump over from, from the 18 month into buns and guns. They may not even get the result that they want and they may say, oh my God, that was a really bad idea. That derailed my progress. It set me back. Well, that's all good learning. The only way we learn is by failing. So, but the only, the only way that you Fail is not by trying. Failure is good whenever you're trying and you're moving and you're striving. And, and you know, I, I get it all the time and say the eight-week buns and guns and they say, oh, you know, uh, does this program come with, you know, a, with, with a program or with coaching or whatever after the program? Like, do you tell us what to do after the program is finished? And I'm like, well, no. And they go, why not? And I say, well, because that will be an entirely new program. You're not buying an eight-week program with ongoing life, lifetime coaching. You're buying an eight-week program to do over the next eight weeks. After this eight weeks is finished, then you can either choose another program or you can modify and you can find another trainer or whatever, but your journey doesn't end at the end of an eight-week program. Just like if you go and do a course in business on in, on NLP, Neuro Linguistic Programming, or you go and do a course on finance, it doesn't mean that after that course has ended that you are now a financial expert or you are now, you know, uh, you could become a therapist. It just means that you have been done an intensive learning program and you now have more knowledge to enable you to perform your job better. That's what programs are like whenever you purchase them in the fitness world. This is a stepping stone in your journey to enable you to perform your job better. What is your job? Your job is to transform yourself into something different if that is what you want. Your job is to is to work hard. Your job is to build self-esteem. Your job is to set a body goal and work towards it. Whatever it is you've decided that you want for yourself, it's an ongoing long-term process. You don't buy an eight-week program, sculpt the, the body of your dreams, and then give up and then never do anything anymore. Fitness is a long-term ongoing thing. It doesn't stop at the end of four weeks, eight weeks, 18 months, 12 weeks, whatever. So each program that you purchase, each personal trainer that you go to, each webinar that you listen to, each masterclass that you attend, these are all stepping stones in your journey. And if you see them in that way, you will then, you know, you you will get where you want to go and you'll be much more, you'll be much less vested in this program, giving you the result that you believe that you need, because no program is ever going to give you every single thing that you need, just like the first program that I bought, Create Your Network, I thought if I just follow this step by step, the $600 program is the only thing that I'm ever going to need. No, not true. <laughs> if And I think I, I would have preferred to know that actually. I, I would have loved someone to tell me what I'm telling you before I purchased this, that this is, this is the first step. This is the first necessary step to you getting to where you want to go, which is now in 2021. My company turned over $5 million last year. So I, I wish that someone had told me that that was just the first step and I was going to have to spend many, 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 many thousands of dollars and hours in order to be successful because I think it probably would have prepared me better. So that's that's what I'm trying to do with this program or with this podcast. I'm trying to prepare you better that everything that you want, and you know this already, you don't need me to tell you, okay? Everything you want is on the other side of hard work, discipline, and time. Everything. But you just have to be real about what your starting point is. Are you starting from $100,000 
uh, debt? Are you starting from 50,000, 10,000? Are you starting from, from scratch? You're neither in profit nor in debt. Or have you been training for a while? Or have, do you have some good background and you're already starting in profit? Because being really realistic about how long your journey is going to be is going to make the process much more manageable and much more enjoyable for you mentally. Um, I, I mean, I created the 18-month program, which is an extremely comprehensive program. We have a full video library of uh, videos through six phases. We have um, an incredible um, downloads of workouts or we have incredible downloads of workouts. We have a calisthenics program. We're just adding now a home gym program to it, which is barbells and dumbbells. We're, we're bulking it out again for relaunching it and reopening it again in September. So we're constantly adding to this program. It is quite possibly the most comprehensive fitness program that exists on the planet. And yet, I still did for the first two weeks the program was first two years the program was open. I did a weekly live Q and A inside the group for two years. Okay, that's a hundred and four hours of training, live training, on top of everything that was available inside the program. I'm, I then I did four weeks of Facebook live trainings and made those available in the bonus area. Like I. <laughs> I, it never stops. People never stop learning. And the more they listen, the more they absorb, the more they, they tune in, the more they focus on this goal and focus on every single step of the way, the faster they achieve the results. And that is really what it is like about, that is really how you get rid of cellulite. It's, you know, all the knowledge that you build, all of the training that you do, all of the, the, the meal planning masterclasses, you know, that's another program that we have on the website. All of this learning will, if you dedicate yourself to it, will end up in you achieving your goal. But the reason why people don't get rid of cellulite, the reason why they don't achieve their goal is because they have an unrealistic expectation of what one small program can achieve. Even an 18 month program, if you have a lot of cellulite, is not going to get rid of it. You're not going to eliminate your cellulite in 18 months. You're just not. It took me five years to build the body that I have. And I started metaphorically with a $50,000 deposit in the fitness bank. And it still took me five years. So if you're starting from a $100,000 deficit, it's probably going to take you 10 years. And if you're 52 or 55, you better fucking start now because in 10 years, you're going to be 65. Now, you know, will you improve along the way? Yes, of course. Like two years ago, three years ago, I thought my body was incredible. I thought it was, I was in the best shape I'd ever been in. It's only now at 42 years of age, five years down the line, that I can honestly say I like my body. In fact, I would say I love it. I love my back. I love my glutes. For the first time in my life, it's taken me five years to build muscle in my glutes. I never had muscle in my glutes. They were as flat as a pancake and it has taken me five years to build adequate muscle in my glutes for me to feel happy. Was I feeling happier as the, you know, the years went on? Yes, I was. But I definitely only now have started to actually feel happy. And that's because I have been training in the gym, constantly training my glutes, developing eight-week butt camps. I've been doing cryotherapy. I've been doing fat freezing. I've like been doing like um, cryolipolysis, every fucking thing on the market that will help you to stimulate collagen and to eliminate cellulite and tighten skin, I have been doing as much as I can afford to or have the time to. I have been focused, focused, focused on my goal of building a better butt and it has taken me five years of focused effort, but I finally feel happy with it. Someone else might look at it and say, oh, her butt's terrible or it's not as good as mine or it's not as good as you know, Angelica Teixeira, who's former bikini champion, who I'm in interviewing on the podcast, by the way, uh, in July. So looking forward to chatting to Angelica. But, you know, people might not say that my butt is, you know, is their ideal butt, but that's okay because I don't really care what they think because I'm only doing this so I can feel happy in my body. And you may be listening to this and saying, well, you know what, Kim, I like to teach my daughter that she should be happy with her body as it is. And I'm like, yeah, 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 yeah. Like, we're all told that really. But honestly, I don't believe in all that shite, you know, it's all very well to tell yourself you should be happy internally and all this, but like really who the fuck is, right? Who's who's like naturally happily internally? We're not. As human beings, we're meant to strive. We're meant to change. We're meant to be focused on growth. We're curious human beings. We like to learn. We like to better ourselves. It's part of being human. So I don't buy into the whole, oh, you should just be happy with what you've got and happiness comes from the inside. Yeah, it does. But you know what? Happiness also comes, well, happiness also comes from being able to wear a thong bikini on the beach with a fabulous set of glutes 
And anyone who tells me that I'm wrong can go stuff themselves because I don't believe that I'm wrong because I've experienced it and it really is fabulous. Okay, so with all of this, uh, all of this information and knowledge I'm throwing at you, um, let me give you some pointers. So how do you get rid of cellulite? And do you ever notice how my podcasts are really never really about cellulite? Because again, I don't teach content. I teach process. I could say to you, like I said, here's what you do to get rid of cellulite. You eat this, you drink this, you do this and blah, blah, blah. But that's what my programs are for, okay? My programs give give the how, but my podcasts give the process, okay? Actually, that's wrong. My programs give the what and the what to do, but my pod, my podcasts give the how, okay? The over the overreaching process and quite often the overreaching process of doing anything worthwhile is exactly the same. So how do you get rid of cellulite? Number one, get real about your starting point. How much debt, how much cellulite debt do you currently have? How much do you need to clear before you get into profit? Take a good long look at yourself in the mirror, take photographs, examine your thighs and your glutes and be realistic. If you have like a tiny little sausage line underneath your underneath your your glutes with like three dimples you're not a hundred thousand dollars in debt okay and telling yourself that you are really isn't going to do you any favors because you're being unrealistic a beaten you is not better than a non-beaten you so get real okay and stop saying like oh my god i'm so devastated with my pictures because i have so much cellulite and i have need a fucking magnifying glass to see it okay be real how much debt do you currently have number two choose a plan to start with. I'm going to say it again, okay? Choose a plan to start with. Recognize that the plan you are starting with is the first step along the way in your journey. It's not the be all and end all. No eight week butt camp or eight week buns and guns or 18 month sculpt and shred or, you know, booking a, a six week course with a trainer and a personal, with a personal trainer in a gym is going to change your body. Anything that you choose to embark on now is simply a stepping stone along the way. Once you have finished that plan, assess where you are now compared to where you were then and choose your next step. But don't stop moving. Don't paralyze yourself with like, oh my God, I don't know what to do now. And I'm going to take a week off because I worked so hard for eight weeks. No, don't take a week off. Just take a day off if you need it and then get on the wagon and keep going again. And if you're like, I don't know what program to start next. I'm so overwhelmed. Don't overwhelm yourself. That doesn't help anybody, right? Just choose something and start. I have cho- I, you've no idea how many programs I have started and I've gotten like six days into them and gone, nah, this is shite. I don't like this. I started a program years ago by somebody called the Quad Guy because I wanted to build big quads right at the start of my journey. And this guy had me training in the gym two hours a day, six days a week. Two hours a day, six days a week. Total bullshit. If you're in the gym for two hours, you are training too hard. You only need, per body part, four exercises. Maybe five, but four exercises per body part is adequate. Once a week to build that body part if you are training hard enough using mechanical stress. Now, if you're using metabolic stress, such as that that we use in the eight week butt camp, well, then that is completely different. Then you can actually, you know, use, then you can train harder, but not even longer, but you can train the muscle more. Um, but not if you're training hard in the gym using high intensity training. So choose a plan to start. Recognize it is a step along the way in your journey. And once you finish that, assess where you are now and choose your next program and keep going. And if the program is horrible and you hate it and you chose really badly, choose another one. Don't give up until you find something you actually enjoy and that you can stick at. That is how you make a million dollars and that is how you get rid of cellulite. Number three, don't give up. Commit to to doing whatever it takes to get there, no matter how long it takes. The mistake that most women make is they just give up too early. Like they look at my body, me personally, Kim Constable, and and they don't think it took five years. They look at it and they go, I want to look like Kim Constable in 12 months. And I'm like, no, no, sweetheart. Even I did not look like Kim Constable after 12 months. That my body took five years. And let me tell you something as well. The time that it took to build my body actually is completely irrelevant because someone else could train for five years and not look anything 
like me. And this is a really important point to hit home with before we finish. It's not the training program or the training that I did or the personal trainer that I chose or the, you know, the particular food that I chose to eat that got me to where I am now. It was the constant learning and application and the willingness to push myself harder than anyone else that I knew that got me to where I am today. I have been pushing harder in business and in bodybuilding than any person I know, than any person I know for the last five years. I have been constantly adapting, learning and changing based on new information when it came in. Like after my second, actually after my, sorry, my one, two, three, my fifth bodybuilding show where I had been prepped by my first prep coach, Curtis, before, so after my sixth show, before my seventh show, which was two weeks later, I switched trainers. I switched trainers in between two shows. And the reason why I did it is because data came in that this new trainer would actually get me closer to my goals than Curtis had. And I'd given Curtis two years and I've been training by myself for two years. And I realized that this new trainer had the secret of what it was that I wanted. And so I switched. And so you know, you have to be willing to change whenever you see that something isn't working or when you see a better course of action. And my legs doubled in size after I changed to training with Mark, doubled in size and my glutes doubled in size. And I swear to God, I did not have, I had a glute, one glute focused leg day per week. That was it. I wasn't training glutes every single day. I had one glute focused leg day per week. Tuesday was quad focused, but it still also worked the glutes. And Friday was was glute focused, but there was still some work on the quads and the hamstrings. And so and, and my, my legs and my glutes doubled in size because I wasn't afraid to change. And so you have to be constantly seeking, constantly looking, constantly evaluating, you know, but you have to also give yourself time. Like I could not have switched trainers after eight days of training or eight weeks of training. It took me two years of training to switch trainers because I realized, you know, that in two years, it, that I, I had good results, but my results weren't anywhere near where I wanted them to be. So I had a hypothesis that the re- training I was doing would get me the results I wanted. But then after two years, I realized it wasn't getting me the exact results that I wanted. So I looked for a better way. But that is how long it takes. Like my husband, Ryan, has been training now with me since uh, December 2019. That's when we started training together. Now, at the time of recording, this is now May 2021. And I have only just now noticed a difference in Ryan's body 18 months later not even 18 months less than 18 months 16 17 months but Ryan has always trained he was a professional athlete so he was starting with 50,000 or hundred thousand dollars in the bank he was not overweight and he's been training hard with high intensity training five days a week with me since December 2019 and it's only now I've started to notice a, a, a noticeable difference in his chest and his back and his shoulders. That is how long it takes to build muscle and change your body. 16, 17 months. And he's a man. Now he's 49 years of age, so he's not making as much testosterone as he did when he was younger. But that is how long it takes. And he started with a hundred thousand pound deposit in the fitness bank. So if you're listening to this and you're like, oh my God, now I just feel depressed. Well, don't be, okay? Just allow yourself a little moment of, of depression. But really knowing your actual starting point and how long it's going to take is is always a good thing because then you can realign your expectations and you won't be disappointed. I'm not saying don't be optimistic. I'm not saying don't look in the mirror and celebrate your small wins and you'll see those, you know, muscles popping through and you'll see the scale going down and you'll see your clothes are fitting better and you will have all of these specific milestones that you can celebrate along the way, but just know that your expectation may be out of line with reality and that you may not actually get rid of all your cellulite or completely transform your body or make a million dollars or whatever you're going, however you're going to apply the content of this podcast, you may not do it in like eight weeks or 12 weeks or 12 months or whatever. You need to play the long game, okay? Play the long game with your fitness. And that is how you get rid of cellulite. And so to sum up, you can do anything that you want. You can do anything you want. You listening to this right now, if you're on the Stairmaster, you're on the treadmill, you're walking outside, wherever you're listening to me, jabbering on in your ear, you can do anything 
anything that you want. You can make a million dollars. You can transform your body. You can eliminate cellulite. I don't care if you're 30, 40, 50, 60, or 70. You can do whatever the fuck you want. You just have to apply yourself and play the long game and recognize you ain't getting any younger. Like the average person who buys my program is 45 to 65. We ain't getting any younger girls. You need to start now and you need to play the long game and you need to realize that you're in a five to 10 year journey here. So get started now, work your bloody ass off and see every single podcast you listen to, every program you buy, every masterclass you watch, every YouTube video you download, whatever. All of those things are stepping stones along the way. There is no holy grail. There is no one thing that is going to transform your body or your life or your fortunes or your cellulite. Every single thing you do is a way that you're building up internal knowledge. And that internal knowledge is going to compound and compound and compound over over time to give you the most incredible um, springboard into whatever it is that you want to do or whatever it is that you want to achieve, but really focus on building up your internal world in order to transform your external world, because really that is the only way it is ever going to happen. All righty then. So what did you think of that wee lecture? Hey, did you enjoy it? <laughs> You know, I like to give you a wee lecture in these podcasts um, and the theme of them, have you noticed, is really kind of all the same. Nobody cares. Work harder, bitch. And drink whiskey. In the meantime, for any of you who listened to any of you who listened to last week's podcast, um, I was drinking whiskey while I was recording it and um, I decided I was going to change the name of the podcast to Nobody Cares Drink More. <laughs> Or nobody cares to drink whiskey. Um, and so, so, you know, I might drink whiskey again in another future podcast. Um, and, or I might just host one drunk because that was actually quite funny. And I really quite enjoyed it. And I hope that you did too. So, yeah, theme of the podcast, nobody cares, work harder. You just got to commit to the long game. You just got to just focus on building up your knowledge, keeping going, never giving up. And I promise whenever you do that, good things do truly happen. So don't forget to leave a review wherever you're listening to the podcast. Send me a screenshot on Instagram. You'll be entered into the draw to win one of our Sculpted Vegan programs. We will be pulling the winner at the start of June 2021. It's not too late to join Buns and Guns. If you want to do that too, go to thesculptedvegan.com. Uh, find the program Buns and Guns. Click to join. And all that's left for me to say is thank you so much for listening. I really hope that you enjoyed this episode. Um, I really enjoyed being back chatting to you again rather than interviewing guests. Um, it is sometimes kind of hard to fucking think about what to talk about but you know I'm showing up every week and I'm committing to you guys and I hope you're enjoying me waffling on in your ear every week as much as I enjoy talking to you so chat to you next week guys thanks so much have a wonderful rest of the week wherever you are big love from me to you this is your fearless leader over and out and I will chat to you next week bye for now